a body piercing. Some teens think it's a way to look cool, but they may not think about the risks. About a week or so into my piercing, it got a little bit infected. Okay, that one really, really hurt. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it really, really hurt. It grew kind of swollen and just kind of pussy. What seems cool and hip at first can end up infected and ugly. One of my friends got uh, their eyebrow infected and they had to take it out. When I got it done, my whole mouth swelled up. It was like awful, I couldn't eat nothing. It's a foreign object. It's a source of irritation, and it can certainly lead to infection at the local site. Okay, so Connie, your x-ray shows a pretty big fracture on that tooth. I bit down really hard on it, and I just, it hurt. I just felt like something fell off. And I asked her if the tongue bar broke the tooth, and sure enough, it was her tongue bar that got caught in there and snapped that uh, cusp off. We've had patients in that haven't realized, and they've had three broken teeth. A lot of people get infections with the tongue bar. My friend that went with me to get it done, hers got infected. The swelling never went down. It just like pussed up and it was green. Her tongue turned green. Piercings not only can result in an unpleasant short-term infection, they can also lead to a serious, incurable disease, like hepatitis C. You may have no symptoms for decades until a seemingly routine checkup. When you, someone tells you that you have cirrhosis, and your liver is not working right. And that may, may be the consequence of the ear piercing or the belly button piercing or whatever that you got when you were 14 years old. But it isn't always easy to think about something bad that can happen years in the future. Adolescents in general feel that they are invulnerable, that's that uh, everything bad is not going to happen to them, and that they're going to do some risky things. Why do teens sometimes make decisions that put them at risk for disease? Viruses, bacteria, other organisms that cause disease are everywhere. People are exposed to them from the time they are born. Looking for uh, little signs of peritonsillar abscess. The best way to stay healthy is to avoid behaviors that put you at risk for infection. Well, in the beginning I had brown eyes and so I was decided to go green for a while because, green and blue because it would be more fun. Christine has a prescription for colored contacts. But she says some of her friends who want them haven't bothered to go to the eye doctor. They're making homemade colored contacts themselves. Things are getting expensive and if they don't want to pay, then they'll just say, hey, I'll do it myself and I'll create my own product or try to do whatever I can to change myself. Sometimes, teens use food coloring to make homemade contact lenses. This can lead to an infection and serious eye damage. Your body almost attacks the contact lens that sees it as a foreign body, which can really snowball into inflammatory processes, corneal ulcers, serious eye infections, and scarring that can be permanent. Food coloring is, you know, it's cheap and it's easy, but it's not meant to put in contact lenses. In addition to homemade coloring, some people even make their own saline or cleaning solution. If people are using incorrect solutions, there have been cases of um, amoeba infections, people making their own saline, using tap water, where people have actually lost eyes from those infections. So some of them come in knowing that contact lenses, you know, are kind of a serious thing that you have to uh, be careful with. And others, they think it's just, you know, putting on a different shade of lipstick. I think when they're thinking about what they're going to do, I don't think they're worried about the dangers because they don't even realize what they're doing. That's why it's important to identify the potential risks of a behavior before you do it. When you want something, you know, so badly, it's very easy to get um, pulled in this direction or in that direction. For something like colored contacts, the solution is easy. Get a prescription. And if you can't get one right now, wait until you can. It's too easy to do it right, and you don't want to risk anything that could have, um, you know, lifetime consequences. In some cases, your immune system kills off disease-causing viruses and bacteria before they can make you sick. You might not even realize that you were infected. 
but sometimes an infection will make you sick. There's strep throat, mono, colds and flu. While you can't always avoid exposure, you can reduce your risk of infection with some basic precautions. One of the most important is making sure you've had all the recommended childhood vaccinations. These vaccines protect you from diseases such as polio, measles, and chickenpox. The risk of having a death or a, a major residual effect from having these diseases is much higher than the risk of having an adverse event with the vaccination. One of the newer vaccines for teens is the meningitis vaccine, a vaccine that could have saved Evan's life. Evan was just really an all-American kid. He had a lot of friends. He was very funny. He loved to dance, goof around. One day, Evan was a healthy college freshman living in a campus dormitory. But within 24 hours, everything was different. The next morning, we get a phone call from the hospital saying, your son is in ICU. He has bacterial meningitis. You need to get down here as soon as possible. Over the course of 26 days, he was in three hospitals. He had both arms, both legs amputated. He lost his kidney function, liver function. He went through 10 hours of grand mal seizures. They could not stop them. And finally, because of the brain swelling as a result of the seizures, um, he was declared brain dead. Getting a deadly infection isn't something most teens think about. You're young, you're healthy, Something like that could never happen, you might think, but... Meningococcal disease is one of the few remaining infectious diseases in the United States where someone can be perfectly healthy one day and then dead within 24 to 48 hours. Sometimes, infections can be spread by something as simple as sharing a soda. People actually at highest risk for meningococcal disease are the close contacts of a patient with meningococcal disease. How can you reduce your risk of infection? Part of the answer is to use common sense, wash your hands often, and educate yourself about meningitis and other infectious diseases. CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices is recommending routine vaccination of adolescents. The meningococcal vaccine is very safe. It's just a horrible, horrible disease, and that's why it's so important that you protect yourself on the front end. If I had any children still at home, they would have this vaccine, just no doubt about it. To me, it's gonna be a lifesaver. Americans usually assume the food they eat is safe, but that isn't always true. Andrew found out the hard way about the dangers of foodborne infections. It seems like it was yesterday because um, we didn't know whether he was gonna live or die. Andrew developed hemolytic uremic syndrome, a kidney disorder, after he was infected with E. coli bacteria. The likely cause? An undercooked hot dog. It might be because that hot dog was not heated to the degree to kill all the bacteria that could be in it, it the E. coli. E. coli bacteria can infect anybody. To reduce your risk of infection, it's important to properly cook meat, poultry, and fish. It's, it's really that important to cook hamburger meat and to make sure that, you know, you're conscious of there not being pink. And if you're handling uncooked food, it's important to make sure bacteria aren't passed from one food to another. Wash your hands between, um, you know, preparing the meat and preparing things that are then going to be raw, whether it's a salad or fruit or vegetables. E. coli infections can be very serious and are sometimes fatal. Andrew's kidneys failed and he eventually received a transplant from his mother. The illness affected Andrew for years. Ultimately, he recovered and is now leading a normal life. A lot better. Um, before, I just didn't have any energy to play, but now I can just play without getting tired. Sometimes people encounter risks for infection in places they might never consider. Like the school gym. Pretty much every practice you're going to leave with some kind of scrape or something. I've had a couple scrapes in there and not thought of anything about it. Or just always contact head on head, hands on head, um, mat on head, um, and any other parts of the body, shoulder, back, arms. And so it is uh, very common to have 
cuts, scrapes, um, and open, open wounds. And all it takes is for one of those scrapes or sores to come into contact with bacteria for an infection to spread. It's a normal skin germ called Staph or Staphylococcus aureus, which is a normal skin germ uh, and can cause infections. Um, inflammation and swelling, which is, called, which is a cellulitis or deeper infections. Generally, you have redness and pain and swelling. Sometimes it'll look more like an abscess. What's scary about these bacteria is they're becoming increasingly resistant to antibiotics. The resistant type of staph bacteria can be much more serious. Well, it gets in the bloodstream and then it can cause sepsis or in infection of the blood, which makes you very sick and can result in death. It has crossed my mind, uh, definitely, as I know I wrestle a lot of people with uh, very questionable personal hygiene. And, um, you know, you leave with a scrape or something like that, there's no doubt that it could be dangerous. If we go to a big tournament, we'll have maybe one or two people who were uh, disqualified because of, of, you know, skin infection. What's the best way to avoid getting a staph infection during a sports competition? Make sure that everyone uses, uh, washes their hands a lot and just uh, clean the mats off with disinfectant. Almost all of our body touches the, the mat, so we, it's really important we keep it clean, we keep it disinfected. And so we mop it probably once a day, um, you know, it, it most, for the most part five days a week. Well, we wash down the mats every day before practice and after practice for sweat and anything else that might get on the mat. Some teens have learned the hard way how easy it can be to get an infectious disease. Viruses, bacteria, and other organisms can't always be avoided, but you can use some common sense to protect yourself. My friend John's pierced his ears maybe five times, and it's been infected three of the times. He hadn't learned his lesson yet. Most people, I mean, you, you always think, like, that's not going to happen to me. So even if you are aware that even if you are aware that there's a possibility that you can get inf infected by doing it yourself, I mean, you're always going to think, oh, it's not going to happen to me, so. Take some time to think about what might happen if you take a risk. What are the possible consequences? There's so many temptations out there. And if you can uh, think about what your weaknesses are, you know, and, and go, hmm, let me just give it a day. I'll give it one more day. And then that very next day, you might want to give it another day. And then you really start gathering information. In addition to avoiding risky behavior, one of the most important things you can do to lower your risk of infection is to practice good hygiene every day. The things that the kids need to do all the time is wash their hands diligently before meals, um, before, after using the restroom, and um, avoid nose picking, believe it or not since uh, that tends to spread germs to different sites because you get them in your fingers and in your fingernails. Food preparation is another case where common sense can keep you healthy. It's not difficult to make sure that burger or chicken you're grilling is properly cooked. I've never been able, if it's, if it's pink at all, I've never understood that concept of, well, it's soft, I want to be healthy. That, I mean, to me, that's kind of, I guess it's just common sense knowing that to cook your food all the way. I mean, you raw meat, I don't, I don't get that concept. And these teens would tell you, a little personal responsibility goes a long way toward keeping yourself healthy. And I think it's definitely worth like the extra, you know, two minutes you take to wash your hands if it means you're, you're gonna be able to stay at school and keep your grades up. I think it's worth the, you know, two minutes it takes to wash your hands. I remember when um, my whole family got sick, like the entire household got sick, and my mom was the only one who didn't get sick, and we were all like, Mom, how'd you not get sick? She's like, I told you guys to wash your hands, <laughs> and that's all she did, and she didn't get sick. We have signs in all of our bathrooms. It's kind of annoying. I feel like we're like, it's like, don't forget to wash your hands. I'm like, wow, how old are we? But, I mean, I guess it's good. Some people need their reminder, I guess. What steps can you take to reduce your risk of getting an infectious disease?